There are times when you wanna have more control over positioning of objects on the screen. For example, you may want to anchor them to the edges of the screen, or you may want to overlay multiple elements on top of each other. For example, look at this page. We have an aqua color box view, which is filling the entire page. Potentially, this could be a background image. But for simplicity, I'm using a box view. Now, on top of this box view, we have a white box view, which again could be an image, a logo, a title, whatever. In terms of the position, on the x-axis, this box view is in the middle of the screen. And on the y-axis, it's about 10% from top of the screen. Also, we have a gray button that is at the very bottom of the screen. Now, the interesting thing here is, first of all, we are overlaying multiple elements on top of each other. So both the gray button and the white box view are on top of the aqua box view. And we're always gonna get this layout with this positioning, irrespective of the size of the device running this app. Now, if I change the orientation of my device using Command and Write, we still get the same layout. So let's go ahead and see how we can implement this design using Absolute Layout. So once again, I'm gonna add a new page, Absolute Page. And in the App class, I'm gonna change the main page to Absolute Page. Now, in our XAML file, again, I'm gonna add a padding on top and get rid of this content element and start with absolute layout. Now, I wanna show you something. If I set a background color here and run the application, you can see similar to stack layout and grid, absolute layout stretches to fill its container, which in this case is the page. Now I'm gonna remove this. Okay, we wanna have an aqua color box view. Box view, color is aqua. Now, similar to grids, we have two attached bindable properties that we use to set the position and size of each element inside absolute layout. So absolute layout dot layout bounds. And this is a rectangle that determines the position and size of this element. So here we pass four numbers that represent X, Y, width, and height. And these numbers can be absolute or proportional values. By default, they're all absolute. So if I use zero and zero for X and Y, and 100 and 100 for width and height, let's see what happens. Okay, this is what we get. And our box view is 100 by 100 units. Now, I want this box view to fill its container. And here's the tricky part. I don't know the width or height of the device running this app. So I cannot use absolute values here. That's when we use proportional values. Proportional values are expressed as doubles between zero and one. So I'm gonna change this to one and one. And now I need to tell Xamarin Forms that these are proportional values because as I said, by default, they all are absolute values. So that's when we use the other attached bindable property, absolute layout dot layout flags. This is an enumeration with these members, none, which is the default value. And that basically means all these numbers are absolute values. We also have all, which means all the numbers in layout bounds are proportional. We also have width proportional, height proportional, X proportional, Y proportional, position proportional, and size proportional. So back here, I want all these numbers to be proportional. So I use all here. Let's run the application. And this is what we get, beautiful. Now let's put the white box view on top of this box view. So I'm gonna add another box view. Color should be white. One more time, absolute layout dot layout bounds. I want this box view to be in the middle of the X axis and on the Y axis to be about 10% from top of the page. So for its position, I'm gonna use proportional values. For X, I'm gonna use 0 0.5, which is the middle. And for Y, I'm gonna use 0 0.1. Now in terms of its size, 
I want to use absolute values. So 100 by 100. And this time, with layout flags, I want to specify that only the position, which means X and Y are proportional. So we use position proportional. Let's preview the result. So our new box view is 100 by 100 units. On the Y axis, it's about 10% from top of the page. And on the X axis, it's right in the middle. Finally, let's add a button on the bottom of the screen. So button text should be get started. Background color should be silver. Text color should be white. One more time. Attached bindable properties. Absolute layout dot layout bounds. For the position, again, I'm going to use proportional values. So for X, I'm going to use zero. And for Y, I want to use one. So this element is right on the bottom of the screen. For the width, again, I'm going to use a proportional value because I want it to stretch to fill the entire page on the X axis. So one. And for the height, I'm going to use an absolute value, 50. Now, in this case, the first three numbers, X, Y, and width are proportional. So let's specify them. Absolute layout, that layout flags. I'm going to combine two flags here. One is position proportional, comma, and the other is width proportional. Let's run the application. And this is the end result. So absolute layout is useful when you want to have more control over position and size of elements on the screen, especially when you want to anchor them to the edges of the screen or when you want to overlay multiple elements on top of each other. Next, I'm going to show you how to use absolute layout in code.